So in the last videos we were looking at uh, situations where we had an object and it was being held in equilibrium. Maybe there were two strings there and gravity was working down on it. And so it was in equilibrium, it wasn't going to move anywhere. Uh, now, we did that with the triangle of forces. And the reason we could use the triangle of forces is because there's three forces. There's tension here, tension here, there's gravity working down on the object. Then we can resolve that into a triangle. If we add a third, third string in, hanging it somewhere else, and now there's one, two, three, four forces, triangles are not going to help us anymore. But luckily, there's an alternative method, the resolution of forces. So uh, I'm going to do a question here. I'm going to do a question here that could be solved using triangle of forces, but we're not going to use the triangle of forces. We're going to use resolution of forces instead. The important thing, and this is how resolution of forces is really going to work for us here, um, if a thing is in equilibrium, if it's not moving, then the sum of the forces acting on it must be zero. That means that the I components will be equal and the J components will be equal. Okay, I components equal, J components equal. That's the important thing to note with these questions. So let's dive into it. So it's a very familiar question. It's a particle of mass eight kilograms suspended from two ropes. You can see they've given us some angles here, 30 degrees and 60 degrees there. Um, and, and we can sort of construct this in some way. The key is going to be finding the I components of the strings and the, the gravity. Of course, there's no I component there. Finding the J components of the strings and the gravity and then making them equal zero. So first, just redrawing it here try to make it make a little more sense here. Um, now, what I'm going to do first is come up with the J components for all of my of my vectors. Uh, now, I've already drawn in some little dotted lines here. Whoops. I've already drawn in some little dotted lines here. I'm not having much luck there. Now, that's going to be the J component of string one. That's going to be the J component of string two. And this is the J component of my, my gravity component here. All right, so when I do that, what am I going to get? Uh, now, to find that, I can do uh, sine. I can do magnitude of string one. So magnitude of string one, sine of the angle, sine 30. Um, now, if I want to find this other one, that's going to be the magnitude of string two, sine 60. And then this uh, is obviously in the J component already, and it's going downward, so it's going to be negative eight. Uh, these three vectors, because we're in equilibrium, the J components are going to be equal, or they're going to add, add together to equal zero. All right, so um, I can sort of play with that a little bit, because I know that sine 30 equals one half. So sine 30, one half. I know that um, sine 60 equals root 3 on 2. That's the tension in string 2 now. Uh, minus 8 equals 0. All right, and that's going to be like my first equation. Now, my second equation, I can come up with equating the um, I components or adding the I components and letting it equal 0. So the I components for this are going to be tension in string 1 uh, cosine. Now, there's really two ways you can do this. I'm going to choose to do it uh, by taking the angle from the positive direction of the, the x-axis, so cos of 150. I could also have done like negative cos of 30, but both ways would work. Plus the tension of string 2, um, and that's just going to be cos of 60. And gravity doesn't play any part here because we're only looking at the I components. So those two vectors together is going to equal uh, zero. All right, so um, that's going to be, so cos of 60 is one half, so that's one half tension in string two. Cos of uh, 150, that's negative root three on two tension in string one. We add them together and they equal zero, and that is going to be equation two. So now I'm just doing those, solving those two equations simultaneously here and here. Um, it's going to make my life easier, I think, if I put
put this uh, in terms of T2. So if I leave T2 here and multiply both of these by 2, I'll get um, root 3, just root 3, tension in string 1. All right, so multiplying that by 2, I get that. If I move that over that side and multiply it by 2, I get that. Um, now I can take, so now I can sub equation 2 into equation 1. So I'm just going to sub root 3t1 in for um, t2. So now I get half t1 plus root 3 on 2 um, times root 3 t1 minus 8 equals 0. And then you just do some algebraic stuff. So we've got half t1, uh, root 3 times root 3 is 3. So we have 3 on 2, t1 minus 8 equals 0. Uh, half t1 plus 3 on 2, that's uh, 2 t1 minus 8 equals 0, which means that t1 will equal the a will come over there divided by 2, t1 will equal 4. All right, so that's the tension in string 1, uh, 4 um, kilogram weight. Now, for T2, obviously just shove 4 in for T1, probably into this equation here, and you'll get um, root 3 times 4, 4 root 3. Um, okay, so that you've done this before, but this is how to solve equilibrium questions using resolution of forces rather than uh, the triangle of forces. It is important that you can do this. Uh, the triangle of forces is quite limited, limiting in terms of what sort of questions you can do. Resolution of forces, sky's the limit. All right.